resize this a smidge so you can see the whole thing. There we go. So we're going to start a new TMUX session. Now, don't be alarmed by this. You'll see that we started a new terminal, and now we have this nice little green bar at the bottom. This is TMUX. This is a terminal multiplexer. So it allows me to do things, powerful things with my terminal, like split it in half, have multiple terminals open like this. It allows me to have other terminal windows. It allows me to take that terminal window away, take that window away. It gives me a lot of power to play with my terminal, make it look nicer. Anyone knows what's the background music? This is a uh, lo-fi remix of Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask soundtrack. I'm amazed at how well the ARM version of Kali runs now. Wow, I've never used the ARM version, um, but uh, that's impressive. That's impressive. Uh, I've thought about buying like a cheap Samsung phone to start playing around with like Kali NetHunter and so on. And in that case, I'd have to use an ARM version of Kali. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and ping Geisha. Start off with a nice, this is how we basically just prove that we have connectivity with the box. And we do see, we do get ping replies. And what do we, so right off the bat, and again, this is why right, literally right off the bat here, we, we already have, all we're doing is trying to verify connectivity with the box. And already, the seasoned, erudite worker of the black magics can notice some important information about this box. And chat is already pointing it out because all of chat has been here before and knows what I'm pointing out. But this time to live field betrays uh, betrays something about the operating system. By default, Linux sets this time to live at 64. And it gets decremented by one every single time it crosses a router. Uh, this is to prevent packets from bouncing around in infinite routing loops, which can happen. Um, uh, but different operating systems will set this time to live to different values. Windows sets it to 128 by default and cisco sets it to 256 by default so as a so just by seeing this time to live field we can kind of make a guess as to what operating system we're dealing with and in this case it's linux we can expect this is likely a linux machine so let's go ahead and start off the way we always do using nmap good old network mapper nmap is what's called a port scanner we're going to be scanning the ports on OSI Layer 3, the network ports that are open to see what services are available. In order to hack into a machine, uh, usually there has to be some kind of port open. There has to be some kind of port open. Hot tip, hot question. Here's a question for you though, chat. Let's say you have a box with no ports open. There's no, no TCP or UDP. Exactly, Bruno, usually. Let's say you have a box with no ports open. Can you hack that machine? Is it possible to hack a machine with no ports open? Yes, how? Physical access would be one way. Phishing was what was the way I was thinking of. You get someone who's on that machine. This happens every day through phishing emails, my guys. When people click on stupid links in their phishing emails, like, you're accessing, you cannot access that box directly. That box is behind a firewall, it's inside of an internal network. You're not able to, to, to access that box directly, see any ports open on that machine. But yet, you hack it instead because somebody clicked on a dumb thing. Somebody clicked on a dumb thing. A drone with a keyboard, feels dead, that's not fair. That's not fair. I met many, many very smart people click on phishing emails, okay? Very smart people click on phishing emails. Uh, being phished is not a function of how smart you are. It's not. It has nothing to do with your intelligence. Social engineering uh, is just, it's an exploitation of how the human psyche works. You're, they're just human beings, okay? So let's not be weird about it. Title says hack the box. Hey, I have to change the title. I have to change the title. Good call. Thank you. Uh, PG for Proving Grounds, Geisha. I 
I got social engineered by a good Uber scam that caught on before damage was done. Look, okay, I'm gonna give you an example, okay? There's this YouTuber I like, okay? YouTuber I like. We're, we're gonna look at his channel right now because I like him just that much. Let's, let's give you an example since we've brought up, we've brought up social engineering. Some of you may have seen this guy. Some of you may have seen this guy, Jim Browning. 3.49 million subscribers. Big fucking YouTube channel, okay? Big, thick boy YouTube channel. What does this guy do? This channel is all about tech support scams. You know those guy call, those those people calling you, uh, claiming to be um, uh, to be from Microsoft tech support or Amazon or Apple. Um, and they try to scam you out of your money, uh, any one of various different ways, okay? This is a fan-fucking-tastic YouTube channel. Jim hacks into these, he gains it, he hacks into their, uh, machines, uh, these tech support scammers' machines, and he, uh, exposes them. He, he, and he posts videos about them on his, on his, uh, YouTube channel and also gives, uh, tips to the cops. Um, but this guy... Jim Browning, an actual honest-to-God hacker, who not only is an honest-to-God fucking hacker, but also ma literally makes his living on YouTube talking about people that do social engineering. And even him, this video right here, he fell for a, for a, for a social engineering scam in his email that deleted his channel. He fell for a clever bit of social engineering that caused him to, that deleted his channel and he had to talk with YouTube to get it back. So these people who click on phishing emails, they're not stupid. Well, sometimes they are, but a lot of times they are not stupid. This guy is as smart as they come. An actual honest to God fucking hacker who not only is a hacker, Deals with people who are scamming all the time. So he, I, I, you'd think he would be able to tell what a phishing email looks like. But he fell for it anyway. Why? Because it's not a function of how smart you are, my dudes. It's not. It's a function. It's just how the human brain works. Does this make sense? Does this make sense, everybody? We need to get away of thinking of people who click on phishing emails as stupid. They're not. They're not. And, to, and calling them that downplays the issue. It misunderstands and downplays the issue, okay? So let's, let's be, let's be smarter than this, okay? Let's be, let's be, let's, let's understand that the issue of hacking and social engineering, it's more than just people being stupid, okay? It's more than that. Okay? Alrighty. So enough about Jim Browning. Great channel, by the way. Highly recommend checking him out. He's like a hacker kit boga, okay? Any boga haze in chat? Any any fella, any fellow boga, kit boga fans? I know there are a few of you. I'm a kit boga fan. I was on his stream briefly once, uh, not before I streamed myself. It was like a year before that. Uh, but I, he did a meetup in my city. Um, and I went to the meetup and I got a picture with him. Uh, I was even on his stream very briefly. Um, it's too long. It's, it's been, I'm sure, I'm sure, I don't know if the VOD exists somewhere now, but, um, I was on his stream like a year before I did my first stream. Kit Boga is fucking great. I listen, I have him on in the background all the time. He's an, he's, he also calls up those tech support scammers. He doesn't hack them. Uh, he just fucks with them. <laughs> he just, he makes them sing and stuff. It's very funny. Um, lots of, I, I highly recommend checking him out too. He's fucking hilarious. Okay. So, what have we seen? So, what Geisha has reported is that TCP port 21, TCP port 22, 80, and 8088 are all open on this machine, okay? Now, you notice that Nmap is also reporting a service here. Yeah, you know, back to hacking. This is all about hacking. This is all about hacking. Um, like, again, the goal is to teach you guys. It's not to get as many boxes done as possible. The goal is to have a conversation and teach you guys in addition to um, doing the box, like as a backdrop. So we also have a, yeah, I know you're joking. I know you're joking, but some people might be like, dude, can you just get on with the box already? We're gonna get there, relax. The goal is to teach, okay? 
We're, the goal is to make you a better cybersecurity practitioner, not just make you better at Hack the Box. Okay? So, we do see that Nmap is actually reporting that these are various services. Like, it's saying that this is FTP, and this is SSH, and this is HTTP. This is not necessarily true. Uh, Nmap, if you just do this basic Nmap scan of the port, all it's doing is guessing the service based on what port it is. It's only guessing. I thought I tuned into Games Done Quick. Games Done Tick Quick is great. I love Games Done Quick. I watch it every... Uh, I wanted to go to Games Done Quick uh, this past time. Uh, I didn't because of COVID, but uh, I I love Games Done Quick. I've been a I've been a watcher of Games Done Quick since like 2013. Um, uh, like I think it was the second year that they did it. I absolutely love that um, event. Um, I've even shown clips of Games Done Quick on this stream uh, to because they're just like us. Okay. Uh, ju and that they are hackers. Some of them are honest to god fucking hackers. Um, so Nmap is only guessing as far as the port. Uh, yeah, what if you're hacking NTIS and they catch you halfway through and try to isolate the node? Oh my god, do what if they try to double up on the router as well? Like, isolating the node is one thing, but what if they, they double up on the other end of the router? Um, yeah, that's, that's the, that's the real shit right there. So... Uh, if you want to make your Nmap scan undetectable, listen, you have to understand what Nmap is actually doing behind the scenes, okay? Nmap is just making a TCP handshake. It's just making a TCP handshake. That is it. Yeah, like, by default, an Nmap scan is not going to be detectable. Uh, it is only detected if you're making a lot of TCP handshake re TCP requests all at the same time. If you're making a lot of TCP requests all at the same time, it's going to get detected. Uh, probably by network monitoring software. So if you want to make it undetectable, you slow it down. Not necessarily undetectable, but again, the goal is not to, we're not be trying to be Harry Potter, okay? I, I, I use this analogy on stream a lot. We're not trying to be Harry Potter and go underneath our invisibility cloak and be completely undetectable, okay? We're not trying to be that. That's not the goal. The goal is to be what are we trying to be, chat? What are we trying to be? Who knows? Who knows what I always say here? We're not trying to be Hagrid, okay? No, it's not a Harry Potter thing. We're trying to be the leafy bug, okay? The Exactly, the leafy bug. The leafy bug. What is the leafy bug? It's not actually called this, okay? They have a real name, but... Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Those bugs that look like leaves. You see this? How easy is it going to be to spot that leafy bug uh, for a bird when it's mixed in with a whole bunch of other leaves? Or the stick bug. The stick bug as well, for the same reason. We are trying to be this leafy bug. The network defenders are the birds. They're the birds trying to eat the leafy bug. Or the reptiles or whatever. Trying to eat the leafy bug. We are the leafy bug. The leafy bug is not invisible. The leafy bug can be seen. If you look closely enough. But. You are blending in with the backdrop so well. And that's the goal when you're hacking. The goal. Is to blend in with fully legitimate traffic. Okay. That's the goal. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Reframe your thinking. The goal is not to be undetectable. The goal is to be undetected. That's that's a better way of putting it. Don't say don't say things like how do I be undetectable? How do I go undetected? You're never going to be completely undetectable. That is an impossible an impossible standard. Every time you execute any command on a compromised host, you have a chance of detection. Every time. There is nothing that is completely invisible and impossible to detect. Okay? You're trying to make it so that you generate less enough of a small footprint that you blend in with the background of the, of the normal uh, stuff. What platform do you suggest for real life boxes? I feel like Hack the Box is more CTF-like. I, I use a virtual machine in real life just like this one. Um, I use, I, in real life, I also use a virtual machine, just like this one. 
Okay. So, if you want to be undetected or uh, less detectable, use this TAC-T option. TAC-T3 is the default. This is the default setting. If you turn this down as low as like TAC-T0 or up as far as... This controls how fast Nmap goes. TAC-T5 is fast as possible. Is as fast as possible. Nmap will basically run as fast as possible. Um, whereas TAC T0, Nmap is only going to select one, t only going to use one TCP request at any given time. Doing a TAC T0 scan is extremely slow. It is extremely slow. It's going to take forever. It's going to take a long time. And you only want to scan a couple of ports. Like, just scan less. The way you go undetected with Nmap is to scan less. So, if we want to find out what services are actually running on these hosts, we add tech SV here for enumerate versions. So let's go ahead and do that. Leafy bug. I've I've talked about the leafy bug before, my dude. I'm a real I'm a real life red teamer. I do this stuff in real life. And if you want to be a red teamer, want to be a penetration tester, that's the way you need to be thinking. I'm trying to reframe you to what, how hacking really works in the real world. You're never going to be undetectable. That is an impossible goal. Um, but what you can be is real, real quiet uh, and, base, and, uh, and very impractical to detect. There is a TAC T0. There is a TAC T0. Do you use TAC T0 in real life? No. Because it's too slow. In real life, I will just scan... Uh, less ports. I scan less ports and I slow it down a little bit. I like that description a lot. It's I think it's a decent analogy. I think it's a decent analogy. So we do have some services and versions here. We see that there are there is an FTP uh, FTP uh, server running. We see that OpenSSH is running. Uh, we see that there is an Apache HTTP server, and there's a Lightspeed HTTP server. So, uh, let's also do, let's add attack SC. This is for default scripts. Nmap is going to run, is going to try to enumerate these services even further. Like for FTP, for example. It'll automatically see if anonymous login is enabled or not, which is useful. And uh, for SSH, it'll pull it'll it'll pull the public key of the host. Um, that's what we get here, uh, the public key of the host. Um, it'll give us some information about the HTTP servers we get. Uh, it looks like anonymous login is not enabled. FTP feels bad, man. Okay, but we do have a couple of HTTP servers now. Before we go, we're gonna go take a look at those HTTP servers, see what is running. Uh, but let's start, it's always good when we start doing manual enumeration and like looking at web servers and so on, it's always good to have something automated running in the background. So we're going to run TAC P TAC. What does this do? What does this TAC P TAC option in Nmap do? Now, CEH, uh, the CEH certification, for instance, knows, uh, like puts a lot of emphasis on, um, uh, on nmap switches and like knowing what your nmap switches do even like really obscure ones like for Christmas tree scans and shit uh, Which no one ever uses and hasn't used since like 2004 um, But e like even if you're not doing CEH, which uh, you probably shouldn't um, You still real nmap you should be aware of how powerful nmap is You should be aware of how powerful nmap is uh, and what it is capable of doing for you um, so I highly recommend that if you're new to this stuff, spend some time digging into Nmap's capabilities. Nmap even has ways of scanning for various vulnerabilities like Eternal Blue um, and, uh, and Shell Shock and so on and so forth. Um, Nmap has like vulnerability scanning functions as well. Highly recommend you check that out. Why can't CEH at least give you terminal man pages? Like, CEH is absolute garbage. Uh, we've talked about CEH a lot on this channel. It's a piece of trash. It's only good as resume padding. That's it. It's a piece of garbage otherwise. So what TACP TAC does, TACP enumerates specific ports. If you put a TAC after, that means it's going gonna, it's gonna to scan all ports. But not all ports, really. 
Amend that statement. I see ch that's what what chat is saying is it's going to scan all ports. That's not necessarily true. What is it actually scanning? Amend that statement for me, chat. What are we scan what ports are we scanning with this option? Boom. Oreo byte. That is correct. Good work. All TCP ports. TCP ports. There's also UDP ports. And there are a total of 65,535 TCP ports and UDP ports. There's 65,535 of each. Okay? So, in this case, we're scanning all TCP ports. Now, this is going to take a while because there's a lot of ports. While that's going, let's just check out the web servers. Shall we? So, all we see is a graphic here. Uh, let's uh, view page source. Uh, there's no information in the in here. We just see this image. Uh, we could look for steganography in this image, but that's uh, I'd rather not do that unless it's I don't find anything else at all. But we do see a kind of a nice graphic here. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna run another tool, GoBuster. So GoBuster is a directory is what's called a directory brute forcer. Now everyone, you asked five different hackers what uh, what. Uh, what different version? What what? Uh, if you ask five different hackers, what uh, t what uh, directory brute forcer they prefer, you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get uh, five different answers. Okay, Ferox Buster gets thrown around a lot. F up gets thrown around a lot. Dur Buster, Dur Search, Derb. Um, there's so many of these available. I personally like Curl in a Bash Loop. Idiometry is sitting up in his ivory tower with his. He's like, he's that, he's that, um, that Wojak meme of the brain guy that's like sitting on his own brain. What's that, what's that guy? This is, this is, yeah, uh, what is that, the, the brainy guy? Um. Yeah, this guy. This is, this is, yeah, this is him. Right here. This is idiometry. Im, I, idi, idiomentary. Idiomentary is this guy. Okay. He's curl in a bash loop. But that's essentially what these are doing, though. That's a good way of, of uh, summarizing what these do. What GoBuster and any directory brute forcer is going to do is it's going to automatically try to find pages for us. It's going to try to find various pages for us. So uh, we see that. There's nothing linked on this page. There's no links. Even if you look in the uh, page source, there's no links in here other than to the image. Uh, but we can try to find other pages that might be presented here. Uh, so the word list you use of various pages. Uh, and we can look for PHP and TXT files, I guess. Uh, these are for file extensions. We're going to look for files that end in .php and also .txt. Uh, and we'll make it 20 threads. Okay. So we're going to see if GoBuster... We see there is an info.php. So let's check that out. Oh. We get to download this file. So let's go ahead and download this. That is that is interesting because normally I would expect it to be parsed. Let's just open it with Sublime, I guess. See what we're dealing with here. Uh, so it's not PHP code. That's why it's downloaded. There's just a one in it. It just says one. Uh, so not really anything. You can see some basic... Some I was doing Hello World in Sublime text. Um, essentially. My own version of... of uh, this, is, this is Nim, by the way, if you're wondering what that is. That was when I was using Sublime text last. Okay, so there's not really anything to find there. Uh, we're already brute forcing. A hunter must hunt. Random Cyber M bringing us a new cult initiate. Particulate.eu? Particulate.du? Thank you so much, uh, Random Cyber M. Welcome to the All Has Red Team, Particulate.du. Uh, Axic C. Joseph Lucas? 
Cranthy294, Big Dog Ron, Naktaktiver, Nakaday, and Buddy Sinister. Thank you for the follows. Kulu Fatten to all of you. Okay. Uh, yeah, so while this is going, we do in fact want to check the other web server. Because there was another web server, was there not? Was it 8082? What is it? Uh, it was on 8088. Okay. Uh, and we see the same thing here. Let's go ahead and view the page source. We see an identical page here. Uh, so what we can do here is also run GoBuster on that target as well. like my parsing got or my copy paste got messed up a little bit php txt and we have to add 8080 to 8088 on the end here okay and we'll see if we find ooh a cgi bin directory now what is a cgi bin directory chat quite interesting let's take a look at that We get a 301 redirect. 8088 CGI bin. We see slash docs as well. It's where you hide binaries that the web server needs to run for some reason. That's where you put very sometimes web servers need to run various binary files. Um, and sometimes we can exploit these binary files directly, like with a buffer overflow or something like that. And other times there's a vulnerability known as shell shock uh, that might be present here. But let's see. It does appear this info.php is the same. Because the size is the same. Um, let's check slash docs. Ah. So we do see that this appears to be the default install of open light speed web server. So what do we do with this? We have a we have a server version. We have a server version. So what are we doing from here? What what uh what what does this make us want to do? Default credentials, search for exploit. Both of those are great. Default credentials, search for exploit. Both of those are great. get admin and look for command code execution uh, I mean yeah we could do that but let's let's do search exploit first oh let's just do open light speed cross-site scripting we typically don't care about cross-site scripting very much 1.7 1.7.8 1 command injection authenticated command injection ooh ooh Ooh, I'm excited. What do, what do we have here? Let's find out. Let's see what's in here. So, log into the dashboard using the administrator account. So we're probably gonna wanna look for, oh, this just looks like standard code execution slash view slash config manager.php can we just like throw this in here nope it could be that this dashboard is not viewable by us how do we log into this dashboard How'd you know I have one? Oh, we all have one. We all have boners on this blessed day. Um, let's look up. Might be dashboard. How do I log into this? Still doesn't say, huh? 
7080. Port 7080. Is that open? Did we find port 70? It didn't even finish. But we can try nmap tac p 7080. Uh, and we could we throw a tac sv in there as well. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to see if that port host seems down. Did I put the right IP address? Let's verify really quickly. This one over here. Uh, no, it is not the right IP address. It is incorrect. Okay, see if that port is open. Yep, you need admin credentials to see the dashboard. Uh, it still might have... Uh, it is open. It is open. Fantastic. So we can actually... We can browse to 7080. So N this Nmap scan will... Ev uh, this Nmap scan of the... Yeah, it did find it. It just finished. Of course it did. It just finished. Um, but it did find 7080. That full port Nmap scan should find it. Uh, so it is giving us a warning here. Uh, it's just asking us to accept a self-signed certificate. That's normal. Why are we not going, though? Excuse you. Come on. <laughs> okay. Uh, it doesn't seem to be... Allowing it. So many, make as much more this wouldn't happen so much. It doesn't happen all that much, but yeah. I, I mean, I do go right before the stream, and yet sometimes... Sometimes, uh... We do get some interesting stuff here, like slash blocked. Let's check that shit out. So 8088 slash blocked. SSL record... Oh, it's HTTPS. Forbidden. Uh, okay. So let's start yet another Go Buster. Uh, just to make, keep it from getting too ridiculous. Let's just do... Let's make a new window entirely. Go Buster. And let's do 7080. And we need to add the TAC K option as well to ignore SSL. Oh, come on. It gives me a wild card, really? Damn it. So this is one way you can protect against directory brute forcing. You just return a uh, you return a 301 for literally everything. Um, which GoBuster does not like. Um It's frustrating because let's see let's go back to the nmap scan um nmap tac p 7125 let's check out these other ports we want to make sure we evaluate these other ports 9198 uh tac sv and then the ip address So we're scanning these ports in particular to see what uh, services are running on them. Can you just add tac tac wildcard? You can. You get a million false positives though. Like you want to see what happens if you do that? That look like that look, that look good to you? Nope. <laughs> uh, what we can do. Uh, let's do go buster. Dur, tac H. Um, we can make it so that it doesn't return like it found something on a 301 redirect. How do I do that? Status codes. So the only negative status code is 404. Let's do status codes blacklist. Uh, we'll add 301 to that list.
uh, 301 and 404. So that works. So now it filters out all of the 301 redirects. Uh, but we could miss some stuff. Um, but uh, this is the only way we're going to be able to uh, directory brute force on that port, it looks like. Uh, so let's see what's happening. Uh, so we have yet another HTTP server running on... Uh, we have two more HTTP servers, one on 7125. Jesus. Okay, uh, same thing again. And uh, one on 9198. Golly, what, what do you think is going to be on 9198? Oh my god, it's the same thing again. So we do need to enumerate both those ports. So just a lot of go bustering happening here. We haven't really found anything yet, I'm afraid. But this is kind of what hacking is. It's just a lot of trying stuff out, brute forcing, trying to see what's available. Uh, we need to set this to what? 7125. And the next one is 9198. A slash shadow file. Interesting. So we'll do that. Uh, we do see, and a slash pass WD. That's of interest. The shadow file gives us a 403, uh, which indicates to me that it is the actual shadow file because um, the actual shadow file cannot be read by the web server user. So that giving doing a 403 forbidden would make sense. Well, let's check out that past WD, shall we? Shadow. We do get a 403 forbidden. So my guess is that it's trying to access Etsy Shadow. What is Etsy Shadow, chat? This looks like a rabbit hole paradise. Just a lot of ports. Just a lot of ports. It's the passwords. It is the password hashes. It's where Linux stores password hashes. So, uh, the past what is the past WD file then? If, if Linux stores the password hashes, in uh, in Etsy Shadow, what is the passwd file then? And it looks like this is the actual passwd file. The passwd file contains user information. Okay, so why then? Uh, and this takes a little bit of Linux uh, Linux history knowledge. Why then is the is is the does Etsy does uh, the passwd file contain no passwords? Yeah, it's for it's for legacy purposes. When Linux first started, when Linux was uh, just created, passwd used to have password hashes in it. There used to be encrypted password hashes here. Everywhere you see an X, there would be a password hash there. Um, but eventually, but the passwd file necessarily needs to be readable by all of the users on the system. Everyone needs to be able to read the passwd file, or it would break stuff. So, as a result. Um, if people, they eventually decided it wasn't a good idea to keep, um, password hashes in a world readable file. So they created a new file called Etsy Shadow, and now the passwd file for legacy purposes can still have password hashes in there. Uh, but usually by default you'll see, you'll still, you'll, you'll see this X, which means that the user has a password in Etsy Shadow. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, chat? Cool. So, what what should we be taking from this? These are all the users on the machine. It also gives us some information about what what groups they belong to, um, and also what their login shell is. So, if you see this no login at the end, this is probably a service account that we don't really care about. We only care about files with a login shell, and the only one that's like that is this one. We see that there is a Geisha user uh, with a home directory of home Geisha. Uh, only groups that Geisha is in is Geisha. 
Uh, UID 1000. Okay. So what is this? What are we thinking here? Yeah. I'm thinking that this is probably... We're probably supposed to either brute force FTP or SSH. Um, S, uh, with, uh, with Hydra or, um, or any number of other things. We'll use Hydra in, in this case. But we're, we're going to probably start to brute force. Um, because, you know, we might as well. Uh, it's going to be running in the background anyways uh, while we look at other stuff. Uh, Medusa is another option. You could definitely go with Medusa. Uh, I've used Medusa quite a bit. Um, I'm going to use Hydra just because it's what I use most typically in the real world. Um, but I have used Medusa before. Hydra syntax is so complicated. For HTTP post requests, it is. Um, but for SSH requests, it's not too bad. So we can Hydra... Tack L to specify a username. Now, what username are we going to pick? Geisha. Because we see... Uh, in We see right here this Geisha user. We're going to try and log in as this Geisha user, right? Um, tack capital P to specify a file instead. Um, you can also specify lowercase p to just put a single password. Uh, but we're going to put user... Share word lists rockyou.txt. And why are we using rockyou? Uh, first of all, because it works. Second of all, it works in the real world. I do use RockU quite a bit in the real world for brute forcing and password cracking. Not so much for brute forcing. I'll use subsets of RockU for brute forcing sometimes. Um, but RockU is kind of a generalized understanding uh, in the CTF world that if, you're, if you intend a service to be brute forced, uh, the password will be in RockU. Just so that you're not sitting there trying a thousand word lists. Because um, that's kind of lame. Uh, then we're going to specify the IP address. And then S and then we're going to specify the protocol we're going to be attacking. SSH. So, yeah, this syntax is not too bad. This syntax is not too bad at all. Uh, it's it's uh, If you're doing an HTTP POST request, that's when it gets confusing. Um, but for just SSH, super easy. We're just going to hit enter here. And so Hydra is going to now brute force SSH. Now, this is going to take quite a while. Rock U has about 14 million passwords in it. Uh, so it will take quite a while. Uh, if you're cracking a password, like uh, with Hashcrack, uh, with Hashcat or something like that, Hashcrack. Um, but it, 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 it's probably Geisha Geisha. Did we not try? We didn't try Geisha Geisha even. Let's just, let's try Geisha Geisha. Geisha. If it's Geisha Geisha, I'm going to be a little upset. Uh, Geisha. Okay, did not work. So if this brute force does not work, uh, it looks like we're just, it looks like we're just going back to Go Buster. Bustin does make us feel good, chat. How come you didn't try to brute force FTP? The credentials are probably the same. And, uh, probably. The credentials are probably the same. And, uh, they're, uh, and SSH gives us more access. That's why. But you could, we could, we, we might as well go ahead and start, um, a brute force of FTP as well. Just in case. It's the same syntax. So we'll try FTP as well. Uh, there's not going to be really... I mean, this is obviously quite loud. Um, but you, we're not really worried about that in a CTF environment. We don't really care if it's loud. Um, we just want to... Especially on a, on stream, I want to just try and get access to this machine however possible. Okay, Go Buster still going. Did it find anything else over here? We do see that CGI bin. I should probably brute force that CGI bin as well. Uh, it looks like we have too many threads going. It looks like we have too many threads. Let's just go it at the default, which is 10 threads. Mm -hmm. 
How would you make it quieter? Make it go slower. I would turn down the amount of threads Hydra has, so it would go slower. Leafy bug. Uh, we don't have we don't have a hit, so my guess is either this is not meant to be brute forced. Uh, let's do let's do stream raider. That's a good idea. We're waiting anyways. Okay, so we do find the password of let me in here. Uh, both on SSH and FTP. FTP did break it quicker. Let's put this in our notes. Since we are good hackers and we definitely take notes all the time. Uh, Geisha. Uh, what port was that on? Just so I can remember the general path. What port was past WD on? 7125? in and we can kill these go busters as much as bustin does make us feel good we don't need these anymore i don't think ssh geisha at okay well just delete all of the stuff other than the ip address and the password let me in and there we go. So we are we are in as the Geisha user. Hackerman. I'm in. We are we we have we have broken into the mainframe. He is in the mainframe. Exactly, exactly. We skillfully uh, logged in with SSH. Now before we continue, do we have any any questions? About we get that none of that stuff was too cosmic. That was pretty good uh, for a beginner machine. That was pretty good for a beginner machine. Uh, we're not done yet, by the way. We're not done. Uh, we're gonna escalate to. Uh, we have to escalate to root. Uh, we are only user access. This is only half the machine. Uh, so now we have to escalate, and then we're gonna do another machine after that. Uh, we'll do BBS cute or whatever that one of the one was. Uh, uh, does any? But before we proceed. I just want to give anyone a chance, like, that stuff, we just, basically, it was just GoBuster and enumerating every port. How do we find all the extras with NME, to NME and, uh, how do we find, was it NMAP tap P tack? Yeah, that'll scan all TCP ports. It will take longer. In the case of 70, port 7080, uh, we looked up the light speed documentation, and it said that the portal, uh, the administrator portal runs on 7080, so we checked to see if that port was open, and it was. Yeah, ex exactly. Exactly. That I want to impress that upon you guys. Enumeration is the most important part of this entire game, okay? You're never going to be a good hacker, a good CTF player or anything if you can't enumerate and if you don't enumerate comprehensively. Does everyone understand that we we scanned for every single TCP port was open and every single port we looked at. We looked at we we laid eyes on every single port, we ran gobuster on every single one. And eventually we found something. That's, that's, that's what, that's what the game is, guys. That's what the game is. It, that, that, that kind of situation is incredibly common in like the OSCP labs and on the OSCP exam. Intensely common uh, to see a lot of ports open like that with a lot of possible rabbit holes um, for you to enumerate. And you have to be efficient in uh, evaluating uh, all of these open ports and enumerating them, okay? Like 80% of this entire enterprise is all enumeration, okay? It's all enumeration. It, yeah, you have to be kind of like a detective. You have to kind of like look for clues um, and, uh, and wonder to yourself, think critically about what might be possible. In this case, the box gave us the past WD file. 
the box gave us the past WD file. Why would it? Why would the? Uh, what would be valuable with this? Well, we could see what users are present on the machine, which means we can run uh, a brute forcer to see if anything breaks. Uh, and it, in this case, it did. Uh, Geisha is using a weak password, and we were able to log in. So does anyone have any questions about that? Nothing? So let's do some bit. Now that we're logged in as Geisha, okay? We are a, we are a Geisha now, apparently. Don't make it weird, chat, okay? Don't make it weird. Uh, we are now going to try. To, we don't want to be ge a Geisha, okay? We want to be Root, all right? We want to be, we want to get Root. So this is where the fun begins. This is where the fun begins, okay? Um, so we can do some basic enumeration here just to see right at the outset what our permissions are. sudo attack L will tell us if we can run anything as root. And in this case, it turns out we cannot. Oh, sorry, my timer just went off. One second. How many hoodies do I need to be a hacker? Uh, I believe that the cutoff is at least four hoodies. Uh, people are willing to correct me on, or, uh, or uh, um, people are uh, welcome to correct me on that. But I, I know that I would not consider someone a hacker if they didn't have at least four hoodies. Uh, and they have to be black as well. Yes. Um, if you have hoodies of other colors, it does not count. That's an that's an important thing to note. Okay. Um, all right, so what else can we... We can look at what groups we're in. What groups is Geisha in? We can we can run the groups command to see that. And it looks like we are in a number of groups here, but none of these are particularly interesting to me. Some groups that would be interesting are like the LXC group and the... Um, uh, the LXC group would be very, very uh, interesting uh, because we can escalate. Uh, the Docker group would be interesting. Uh, the ADM group can read log files, so that's sometimes interesting. Um, but what, nothing we're seeing here is ostensibly exploitable, so we can probably move on. Uh, let's look at what's in her home directory. We do see a local.txt, so let's check that out. Local.txt. This is the flag for user access, so we can uh, bring this over to uh, Proving Grounds. My freaking heads! I need to get a new headset. This headset has turned itself off like four fucking times just in this stream. We paste the flag in here. We hit save. And it says our progress has been updated. And it should... We should, should get half of this bar filled here in a moment. There it goes. So half of the bar filled up. Hypothetically, if the hoodie string is stuck... Ha God, I hate it when that happens. When I, I almost refrain. I, ref I I sometimes refrain from washing my hoodies because the, the string gets caught and it gets stuck up inside of the hood. I hate that. It drives me nuts. Um, and Because I, I have to like tease it out again. It fucking sucks. Um, we don't really have anything interesting. Uh, make a not monkey. Yeah. Well, not everyone is as big brain as three left seconds, okay? You can, you can have the brain Wojak too, okay? Brinkly brain. Um, by the way, it doesn't even count. Uneven strings is the sign of a skitty, yeah. Um, uh, so let's see what's in the root directory really quickly. Anything interesting here? Uh, we're looking for, we do see a bash history. What is this? Someone's home folder? Uh, oh, this is root's home folder appears to be set to the, to the root directory, which is strange. Not slash root, just root. Uh, we can also check opt. Opt is where people typically put third-party software, like Nginx. So we do see Nginx is here. Uh, so let's go into Nginx. See if we can see any of this. Uh, looks like we can read most of this. We see the passwd file and the shadow file. Uh, we cannot read this shadow file, unfortunately. If we were the www data user, we could read this shadow file, but we cannot. Uh, we can read this passwd file, and this clearly is where we found passwd. Let's try var www. 
HTML. Uh, we see info.php, which we already knew is there. So not really anything to find on those uh, on those web servers. Uh, we can look for SUID binaries. What is an SUID binary, chat? What is an, a set user ID or SUID binary? What is this? Helium Factory. Thank you for the follow. Cthulhu Fatten to you, my friend. Program that runs as root. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. SUID binaries can run as any user, potentially. Runs as the owner. Good. Good, 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 good. Uh, now, it is true... Mm, sticky bits? It is not the sticky bit. It is not the sticky bit. It is not the sticky bit and the SUID bit are different things. This is a common misconception that another name for the SUID bit is the sticky bit. It's not the case. The sticky bit is different. The sticky bit uh, is... Um, it prevents that... If the sticky bit is set, it prevents the file from being deleted by any user other than the user that owns it. Essentially. That's what the sticky bit does. Um, SUID makes it so that uh, whenever, who, no matter who runs, for example, passwd binary, the passwd binary always runs as the permissions of the owner. Always runs as the permissions of the owner. Now, it is true that you typically see this happening with root because uh, think about what passwd needs to do. This, uh, this binary here, uh, resets the user's password. It changes the user's password, which means it needs to write to Etsy Shadow because that's where the passwords are being stored. And only root can read or write to Etsy Shadow. Okay? Uh, so, passwd needs to be run as any user, but it needs to run with root permissions. Okay? Um, uh, so, let's look and see if there are any binaries here uh, that stick out to us as non-default. Uh, as strange um these look normal this one doesn't what's base 32 what's that one chat that's weird that is not default now you might be asking what how do i know how do i know that these things are normal like i've never heard of f user mount mr streamer how do i know that f user mount is a default thing it is but how would you find out? You would come over here to this file, this uh, this called this uh, website called GTFO bins. I mean, the real answer is, the real answer, the real answer is, uh, if you don't know any of these any of these binaries, Google them. Uh, but a quick way is to uh, and Google them and learn what they do to determine if they're real. But the reason I know that F user mount is normal and G pass WD is normal and, and CHFN is normal, uh, but base 32 is not, is just experience. It's doing a lot of these boxes and being and seeing a lot of these SUID binaries and you learn and after a while you can tell what sticks out to you. It's just repetition. Uh, but if you don't know, you can check. Like let's try base 32. Now if like let's try F user mount. Let's say we don't know what F user mount is. We type it in here. What is GTFO bins, first of all? These are ways to abuse uh, binaries uh, being run as root or being sudoed or whatever. These are ways to exploit legitimate binaries that, are being, that have been misconfigured to have been given uh, more permissions than they should have. That's what this is for. Very, very useful website. Highly recommend that you add it to your toolkit. GTFO bins is extremely valuable. Okay. Um, so F user mount doesn't have any matches in here, which means there's probably no known way to exploit this thing, uh, to exploit F user mount, uh, to gain root, uh, code execution. However, base 32, base 32 does have a function, which makes sense. What does base 32 do? Well, it encodes, it encodes, uh, any input in base 32. It can encode or decode in the base32 format. Base32 basically reduces um, a uh, reduces any byte down into a 32-bit uh, down into a 32-bit size. Um, I, I, it's it's a form of encoding. It is not encryption. It is not encryption. 
The more common version of this encoding would be base 64. Uh, but base 32 also exists. Um, and in this case, uh, you can feed a file into base 32. You can feed a file into it. So what if we encoded a file with base 32 and then decoded it? We could probably just read files as root, right? We could just, if this file, if this file is owned by root, which I bet you it is, LSTAC LA, most of these system binaries are, we do see that this file is owned by root. And in fact, my terminal is even identifying that the SUID bit is set, which is this one. The SUID bit is set and it is owned by root. So it gets this red highlight to alert me that this is a root set UID binary. Does that make sense? And if this runs as root every time we execute it, that means we can essentially read files as root. Yeah, set group ID is also set. It doesn't need to be, but it is. So let's, uh, how would we exploit this? Well, GTF opens can tell us. Let's ask GTF opens, file read. Very, very simple. It has you set a variable. You don't necessarily need to do this. All you need to do is this part. Paste this in right here. Uh, is it proof.txt? And looky there. We can just read proof.txt. Just like that. Or we can read Etsy Shadow. There's Etsy Shadow with the password hashes. Does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions about that? I know it kind of seems like it kind of seems like black magic. So you're like, yeah, what what just happened? I could I but does everyone understand what is happening? I want to make sure that we that we understand what's going on. FBI, open up! Yeah, I know. We've just uh, we've angered the FBI. Any questions? Can you please explain the part again with the, t with the tools and stuff? Well, the only tool I use is I just search for SUID binaries. That was this command. This find command right here will search the entire file system for SUID binaries. Okay. Uh, and, and we found, with that command, we found a list of all set UID binaries, which are all of these. And we see this one sticks out to me because it's not normal. It's not a normal set UID binary. Okay, and so we come over here to gtfobins.github.io and we search for base32 and sure enough, you can read arbitrary files as root. So I need to read about set UID? Yes, read about what set UID is. Set UID binaries uh, are very, very common. It's very, very common to be able to escalate through set UID binaries. Uh, to be able to escalate to root, I should say. Uh, we can also, we can see if root has an SSH key as well. Why can I not type? Oh, there we go. I forgot I scrolled up. So we can try root dot SSH IDRSA. That's the normal name of someone's set. I'm, and it does have an SSH key. So root does have an SSH key here. Set to paste mode, paste this in. Now we do have to chmod 600 root RSA. Uh, SSH will not take a key that thus it has these specific permissions. It's very picky about that. Root at this IP address. And there we in. We're, we're in as root. Does anybody have any questions there, chat? I know we just, we, we did some black magics there, okay? We did some black magics, but I hope, I hope we, I hope you guys understand. I hope it makes sense. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. What was in FTP? I'm curious. Good question. Let's check. I mean, it doesn't really matter now. We have root, but we can just uh, FTP. Um, see what was in FTP, just out of curiosity. Geisha. Let me in. Oh, it's just her home directory. It's just Geisha's home directory. Please hack my ex's Instagram, sir. I do not, I don't sell Instagram hacks. At least not here. I can't wink for shit, dude. The muscles in my face just don't work. I can't isolate, it's so hard for me to wink. Isolating, isolating my muscles on the right side of my face, it's so hard. I just don't have the, uh, the nerve innervation to do that. Uh, where did I put this? Submit flag, paste, and there we go. Now, any last questions on that machine? We are gonna spin it down now. That's that go buster running. Okay, cool. All right. Okay. All righty. Explain Chamad permissions on a base 32, please. Homie in chat was confused why a root file was accessible. Uh, okay. Uh, well, let's look at... Okay, let's look at these files, which are just default. Uh, these are aliases, but it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's look at these permissions right here, okay? So, this first one just means it's a directory, okay? This first one just means it's a directory. Uh, don't worry about don't worry about that. It just means it's a directory. These ones are the permissions. So these are these are how Linux permissions typically look. Uh, they're in sets of three, okay? And it's one byte for each. So the values can be from zero to se or one. Uh, the values can be from zero to seven. Okay, not one byte. I made I I messed up. I messed up. But. It's it's one it's one byte for the permissions. It's one byte. Uh, it's 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 confusing. I, I'm I'm confusing you. Okay, look, just divide it up into threes here. Divide it up into threes. Okay, these first three are the permissions for the owner. Uh, these first three. So, this 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 file, its owner has read, write, and executable permissions. The second three are for the group. The group has read and execute permissions, but not write permissions. The last one is everyone else. Everyone that's not in the same group and does not own the file. Does that make sense? Does that make sense there? So if you set something to 600, if you chmod something to... Let's just uh, touch test.txt. Uh, chmod 600 test.txt. Let's see what that looks like. So this is what it looks like if you do shimad 600. What does this mean? It means only the only permissions it has is that the owner can read and write to it. This is the permissions that SSH wants uh, because it's secure. It's uh, only the user only the owner should be able to read and write to their SSH key. Nobody else should have any permissions to read or write to them. Because that's dangerous. Hopefully that makes sense. So, which other box were we going to do? We, I think we were going to do that BBS cute box. Yeah, this one. Let's, uh, let's spin this one down. Stop this one. And then we'll start up the other one. 
Any last questions about that uh, that last machine before we move on to the next? We got a few minutes here before uh, before the box is done spinning up. Is Proving Grounds just big OSCP prep? It is good for OSCP prep, yes. I mean, it's just a CTF platform, like Hack the Box or Try Hack Me. But I would say that Proving Grounds tends to be closer to what actual OSCP is like. Mean Machine, AQCO1, Tuxu, Earthel, Caesar EU, BL 4 and Helium Factory. Thank you for the follows. This is real good for beginners, I would say. That was a good box for beginners, I think. That was a good Newbie Tuesday box. F3, a, a Femin, a fem, Femi, Femi, thank you for the follow. Cthulhu Fatten to you. Can we start up BBS Cute yet? Okay, it looks like it is letting us start it up. Okay. All right, so we're in BBS Cute directory. I found I enjoy Proving Grounds a lot more than Try Hack Me as I get some experience under my belt. Proving Grounds is good. It's good. Uh, Try Hack Me and Proving Grounds are the best ones for beginners, I would argue. Uh, hack the Box. Hack the Box is great. I love Hack the Box, but it has kind of a steep learning curve. Um, I think next week we're going to try the new starting point. I think they've overhauled the starting point. Uh, so I think next week for Newbie Tuesday, we're going to be doing starting point. Uh, the new starting point. We'll see how that goes. Last time, on the old starting point, the very first machine had Windows Defender active. Like, that, it just pains me, dude. It just, like, you make a set of boxes. Like, Hack the Box's philosophy in the past has mostly been, hey, if you can't hack the box, try harder, idiot. Um, they haven't really cared if you're new. Like, they expect you to come in and just struggle and figure it out on your own. But then Try Hack Me came into the space, and Try Hack Me was actually catering to newbies and taking a lot of their business away. So now Hack the Box puts in Starting Point, which is a series of machines specifically curated for beginners. And then Windows Defender is active on the very first machine. How hard it would it have been just to disable Windows Defender? I it, it, guess it's baffling to me. Like, I, I, like, it's not like Windows Defender is a perfect defense or anything like that. But I wouldn't say that a newbie should be having to deal with Windows Defender from day one. Uh, it's just going to cause them a lot of headache that's really not doing them any good. Now, me facing up, I would say my boxes should have Windows Defender running. Uh, just to... I should be forced... Uh, to grapple with Windows Defender. Uh, just uh, in that kind of thing. Hack the Box Academy, it's their answer to try hack me. They put it in as an answer to try hack me. Let's reload the page because it looks like the page is kind of fucking up a little bit. Um, uh, BBS cute, where is it? Oh, it's here. Okay, so we just started it up. Let's see if we have... Uh, let's ping it. No. I always get this tab after it. I hate that. Ping. Okay, so if I make a new thing... I end up in BBS cute. Okay, good. I started a new Tmux session. Okay, so we do ping, and we see that this is once again a Linux machine, which is what we expect because um, due to licensing issues, uh, there are in the free version of Offensive Security's Proving Grounds, there are no Windows machines. Uh, there are Windows machines on Hack the Box and Try Hack Me, though. I remember that Windows Defender one. I had to modify the PowerShell reverse shell to get it to work. I got past it just fine. My concern was just for beginners. That beginners shouldn't be grappling with hack the box or with a uh, uh, with Windows Defender right off the bat. So we're gonna run a servit. Remember, this is enumerate versions, uh, and then I wanted to do tech sc. 
uh, for default scripts. So let's do that. This is like the basic end map scan that I like to write. At run. All right. So we have some stuff here. We do have a lot of information, but let's just parse this apart and then show what we're actually looking at. So we're seeing pop 3D on here. What is pop 3? Anybody know what pop 3 is? Who knows what pop 3 is? You can kind of get some you can kind of get some e some uh it's it's email stuff. It's email. It's basically email. IMAP is another version. It's an older it's a newer version than pop 3. Uh, we also see uh, two web servers. HTT we have Apache running on port 80 and we have Nginx on port 88. And we also see port 22 has SSH running on it. Okay? Easy peasy. Uh, let's also run a full port scan while we're sitting here. Or not while while we're going to we're going to enumerate those web servers. But before we do that, let's go ahead and start an all port scan so that we don't waste any time. It's always good to have automated stuff running in the background as you look at the new stuff. Okay, I did not mean to paste that. I thought I was pasting the IP address. Okay, so we'll see what's running on port 80. We see the default Apache page. That's pretty common um, for web servers that are, not, are, that are still under construction. And we get a 404 when we browse to uh, port 88. So you guys know what we're doing here, right? What are we doing here, chat? Do SV and SC add significant time to a scan? Yes. Depending on the number of ports that are open, they'll, t they'll add significant time to the scan, yes. And so that's why for the all port scan, I won't use those options. Uh, and instead, I'll run, I'll run another scan after the all port scan to enumerate other ports. Curl in a bash loop. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna use GoBuster again. We're gonna, it's time once again to do some busting. Busting makes me feel good. Busting, busting. Busting makes me feel good. I ain't afraid of no sleep. I ain't afraid of no bed. Busting makes me feel good. If you haven't seen that YouTube video, what the hell are you doing with your life? Just look up busting on YouTube. I ain't afraid of no sleep. So we are getting stuff there. I ain't afraid of no bed. Okay. So we're going to we're going to go buster both of these ports. Can you thread go buster? It's threaded by default. It runs in 10 threads by default. You can change the number of threads with the TAC T option. How do I disable the antivirus in Windows PowerShell? Uh, you can't, first of all, you can't uh, if there's tamper protection on. If tamper protection is on, you can't change it through PowerShell or any kind of scripting. Uh, other than that, that command is true. That command is uh, raffle baffle, raffle baffle. That command that you put in there is correct if assuming tamper protection is not on. If tamper protection is on, that will not work. It, will, it won't throw an error, but the uh, uh, disable real-time monitoring will not change to true. That's specifically what tamper protection is meant to stop. Johnny MD5 with a two-month resubscription. Welcome back to the All Has Red Team, my friend. Uh, so we see some ver a variety of stuff here. Uploads. We like to see that uploads directory. I ain't afraid of no sleep. I ain't afraid of no bed. Go to search.php. Uh, we are seeing some stuff here. Uh, so let's fire up Burp Suite here, uh, which is our web proxy. So I can, uh, what Burp Suite is, it is a local web proxy. It's gonna capture all of my HTTP requests, all of my web traffic, and it's gonna let me look at them and pull them apart uh, and modify them and play with them. Very, very powerful tool for web application testing. For testing web applications, it's really indispensable. And you're going to see some degenerates, some outright maniacs uh, in chat mentioning something called Zap. Uh, these people are absolutely deranged. And I don't mean in the good way, like, you know, like you'd expect a, a, a crazed cultist to be. Um, I mean in like, in like the dangerous way. These people are dangerous animals that should be put down. Okay.
So learn zap first. I do not recommend. Uh, I do not recommend. Uh, I would rather see Pornhub in my in my in my uh, search history than OWASP zap. Okay, so we are going to, we're setting, I'm setting, this is now going to intercept all of my requests. So let's try test, test, search, no news articles matching. So we do see, ah, so we see some interesting stuff here. Some very interesting things here. What are, what are we thinking? What, what am I thinking might be possible in, uh, in this web application? Just based on this. Yeah, maybe some SQL injection. We could try um, we could try putting in a single quote into these fields. Two short request. What does it look like? Uh, so we could put a single quote and then test. No news articles. We could try an or one equals one little a simple injection here with a comment no news articles so probably no SQL injection here I'm thinking right off the bat probably no SQL injection we're not really sure yet we'd have to test it more but what is it what is or one equals one uh, that is uh, that's a bit really simple SQL injection uh, if it worked it would have showed all the news articles in the database, or it would have it would have dumped all the news articles, essentially. Try a time-based SQL injection. Well, at this point, at, at this point, honestly, I'm going to use SQL Map. Let's just use SQL Map, okay? Again, the goal is to operate efficiently. How often do you see or one equals one in the wild? Uh, it's rare, but I have seen it in the wild. I, I, I and I, honest to fucking god. Honest to fucking God, uh, one client, oh my God, this client had so many issues. Uh, I can't even, where do I even start, dude? I found all kinds of shit. It was a field day. Uh, I found deserialization vulnerabilities. Um, and I also found, uh, an admin login page, uh, that I was able to bypass with the old or one equals one. And I'm serious. It did work. This is an active web page that was open to the internet. Like, I was accessing it from the seat right behind, from this desk right here, over the open internet, and I just logged in as administrator with or one equals one. I think I work for them, Mr. Streamer. I think more people than really realize it work for, uh, work for shit like that. So, uh, SQL map is automatically going to test for SQL injection for us. So, we're going to copy to file. We're going to right click. Make sure you don't highlight any of this. Because if you highlight any of it, it'll only copy the highlighted section. We want to copy the entire request. Copy to file. Proving grounds. Uh, BBS cute. Uh, search dot request. Save. From here, we can come over here and we can go SQL map. Tack R search dot request. Tac tac level equals five. Tac tac risk equals three. This this sets the level to five. It's gonna make all do all the checks, and it's going to not worry about being detected or anything like that. It's just gonna run. It's it's just gonna uh, go run wild. And we also want to run to uh, tac tac batch. Tac tac batch is gonna because normally SQL map asks you a whole lot of questions, uh, like if you want to continue and so on when various things come up. Um, I tac tac batch will just have it accept the defaults every time so we don't have to babysit it Oh, it looks like I copied the wrong thing So you don't want to put an injection in the default. Let's just use this one. This one works Copy to file uh, search dot request You uh, yes And I will do this again and there it goes. Now SQL map is just going to go. And the reason I'm doing this is because there's a lot of parameters here. There are a lot of parameters. And this is just efficient. Part of being a pen tester is about being efficient. 
There's a lot of things to look at. You don't want to sit here manually testing SQL injection, especially not when there's all these different parameters to test. Like each one of these, any one of these different parameters needs to be tested SQL uh, separately. So it's not really worth um, getting wrapped around the axle doing it manually. Uh, so we do have a lot of stuff. We do see an index.php. Fantastic. Which means that there is a home page here. Let's see what's happening here. Uh, cute news. Uh, looks like this is a long edge. Powered by cute news 2.1.2. So what are we doing? We have software versions. What are we doing, chat? Remind me. Search exploit. We're going to search for this. Ver We're going to use our... Kali has a built-in database of vulnerabilities, and we're going to search for them. Wow! I'm full masked, my dudes. If I see a if you see a remote code execution vulnerability with the exact software version, boing, boing, it's a good thing you guys can't see below the table. That's all. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay. Ha! Gay! So, we do have remote code execution by the looks of things. There even is a Metasploit module for it, by the looks of things. So let's take a look at the basic. Let's see how this works. Attack X for examine. Just going to read this. It's going to open the file in less for me. So what have we here? Uh, this is a Python exploit, obviously. So it looks like it is exploiting that search function. Let's just uh, let's let's look it up on Google. Feeling cute might exploit later. Yeah, might RCE later. What is it? Cute news. 2.1.2 I'm just looking for information on how this exploit works This is the exploit we just looked at I'm just looking for Details of the vulnerability uh, This medium vulnerability Okay Okay Uh, so it looks like it's a PHP file upload. It's a file upload vulnerability. We're uploading a vulnerable file to the target. It looks like we, uh, we're going to have to register. Uh, we can just try the old mainstay admin admin pretty quickly. Nope. We'll just go ahead and register here and make ourselves... Email. Uh, there is no CAPTCHA. Come on. There's no CAPTCHA. I don't see... Do you guys see... Am I a robot? Am I being leaked? Is there a CAPTCHA here and I just can't see it? CAPTCHA did not... I'm being stymied by a... Uh, remove proxy. Maybe it is the proxy. Chat, don't tell him. God, you're all so fucking mean, dude. You're all so mean. Why are you so mean to me, chat? There is no CAPTCHA! Can you 
see the capture value in burp? It could be. Hang on. What? If you could see the capture value, I did I did remove the proxy. If what? If you can you see any problems of if you could see the capture in burp? It's right there. Fuck you guys. Fuck you guys. Okay. Listen. All of you guys saying right there. All of you guys saying it's right there. Fuck you guys. Okay. Every single one of you. I see 17 traffic lights. I hate you. <sighs> uh, I don't know. Let's just look at the page source here. Is there a CAPTCHA here? CAPTCHA.php So this is not a PHP file. I think I see what the issue is. It's right there. <laughs> I'm super funny. <laughs> CAPTCHA harder. Listen. Listen. I'm an actual honest to god hacker. I'm not going to be stymied by a fucking captcha. It's not going to it's not going to happen, okay? It's not going to happen. We're going to get through it. So, my initial question is, where was that captcha.php? Is that the same every time, I wonder? Aleppo. Razo. Ah ha 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 ha! Ah ha ha! This is the CAPTCHA! Fucking chat. Okay, here we go. Ready? Alright, um. Captcha. So do I have to reload? Okay, Bouveyor. Let's try Bouveyor. Ha ha! Ha 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 ha! I'm not a robot after all, chat. The hacker. Hacker man. I'm in. I'm in the fucking mainframe now, chat. Okay. Dark Eldar recognizes the skills. This is why you're here, okay? Bypassing captures. Mouse block Matthias 0123, JC Vern 23, Aures 7, Boss Manorana. Thank you for <laughs> welcome to the All Has Red team. Thank you so much Dark Eldar. I really do appreciate your uh, continued support of the stream. Uh not you okay? Thank you for the follow. No darkness Ploxer. Thank you for the follow. Car 10 with a first time subscription. Welcome to the All Has Red team, my friend. Thank you so much. My boy, yeah, we're, we are in now. We are in. That was a little bit rocky. Was that intended? That's really weird. That was really strange. That was very strange. Okay. We, so we get, we can view our personal details. There's functionality allows us to upload an avatar. F spectacular. So let's log into personal options. We see that we can upload an avatar here. Excellent. Try uploading a PHP file without adding the GIF magic bytes. Upload avatar is not correct. Let's say, let's try this. Let's try working through this. So let's try uh, a basic PHP web shell. So vim cthulhu.php. Uh, we can write some basic PHP here. Okay, so we now have, this is real, real basic PHP web shell, okay? Basically, it's gonna, it's gonna, first of all, it's gonna print Cthulhu font into the stream. I like to print a little string to the stream, or to the screen, so I can tell if it's executing, even if system isn't, because sometimes system is a blocked, uh, function, okay? He couldn't get that, excuse you! Excuse you! I absolutely did get past the CAPTCHA. I absolutely did. 
Well, excuse Princess. And then we're going to try to execute uh, the command that's given in the CMD parameter. Very, very simpler stuff here. Very, very simple web shell. Let's try and upload this to the web server. This is extremely, this is extremely common, by the way. This kind of file upload vulnerability, extremely common. Madruga182, thank you for the follow. Cthulhu Fatten to you, my friend. Let's try and upload this. Proving Grounds, BBS Cute. Save changes. And we do get Avatar is not correct. This likely indicates that they are correctly checking to make sure that the file you're uploading to the server is an actual image. Listen! Three left seconds and sus fart. Listen, both of you, sit the fuck down and shut up. I got past the captcha, and all of and that was despite all of chat being mean to me. I will turn this stream around. <laughs> so. This is where the concept of magic bites comes in. This is where the concept of, what are magic bites? Okay? What are magic bites? Does anybody know? What are magic bites? Bites pulled up. You're so you're so clever, Johnny MB5. You're so clever. Use Bruno is correct. Use to determine file type. So magic bytes are is how Linux determines what kind of file you're dealing with. So if I do file cthulhu.php, it says it's a PHP script ASCII text. How does it figure this out? How does it figure this out? It looks at the first bits of uh, the first bytes of the file. It looks at the very beginning of the file um, for bytes indicating what kind of file it is. In this case, it sees the PHP tags. In this case, it, see, it sees it sees these PHP tags. And says, "Oh, it's a PHP script and it's ASCII text." Okay, but let's say, does that make sense? How does Windows do this? Oh, so Bruno's already ahead of me. Windows uses the file extension. By file extension, I mean .exe, .txt, .aspx. File extensions are how uh, Windows makes that determination. So, uh, if the web server is using magic bytes to determine what kind of file has been uploaded, we can put in our own magic bytes and get a PHP script up on the server anyways. So let's find out what are the magic bytes for, for a GIF. Um, it is pronounced GIF. It is pronounced GIF. Do not say GIF. If you say GIF, I'm going to ban you. Do not say GIF. Do not. It's pronounced like the P... Yes! The actual creator of the file format pronounces it GIF. The actual creator of the file format. Ima imagine being as confidently incorrect as these degenerates in chat. Like, I have never seen people be so confidently incorrect as people who think it's pronounced uh, GIF. So these are file identi- list of file signatures. These are basically magic bytes, otherwise known as magic bytes. Um, we can pick any one of these GIF ones. Let's do this one. Uh, either one of these should work, but we'll do this one. So let's uh, vim cthulhu.php. Let's paste in that those magic bytes at the beginning of the file. And now let's upload the file a second time. Get rid of this CAPTCHA shit. The CAPTCHA's behind us, okay? So it can't hurt us anymore. Save changes. And looky there! 
Looky there. We have uploaded our avatar, which isn't really an avatar, to the system. And we can even see where it's been uploaded. It's in the slash uploads directory. So if we just, we can just replace this with HTTP colon slash slash and then the, uh, this. Let's move that over to the side so I can still see it. We did see an uploads directory in GoBusters, so. And looky there, chat. We have code execution. So, file upload vulnerabilities result from weak file uh, verification. Uh, in this case, Matt, we were able to bypass the file verification by putting in the magic bytes of a GIF. So the website thought we were uploading a GIF. It was actually a PHP script. But also, in addition to being able to upload a file, you also need to be able to browse to the file. You need to be able to find the location of the file on the web server. If you can browse to it, you can then execute PHP code. I guess I'll be going to bed knowing a little bit more than I did yesterday. First time learning about Magic Bytes. Fant spectacular. That's my goal. No, teach you guys a little bit more than you knew yesterday. Uh, Katat, Katato Saika, JPC Belgarath. Thank you for the follow. Cthulhu Fatten. To you guys, my... To you guys. Never ceases to amaze me the dumb shit that works. Dude, that's literally all hacking. That's literally, it's all, stu it's all, listen, I, w when I call it the black magics and the dark arts, it's because it seems that way to people who aren't actually in the business. What it actually is uh, to ape uh, Han Solo is it's simple tricks and nonsense. Hacking is simple tricks and nonsense. You need to upload a course on advanced capture evasion. <laughs> Helium Factory has uh thank you so much for the 500 tiggle biddies. Welcome. <laughs> thank you so much for those 500 tiggle biddies. So, now we can add a CMD equals ID parameter and look at that. No, 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 no. We have code execution. Now, I like to do this in burp. I'm going to do this in burp here. Is this not being captured? It's not being captured. Uh, and the reason I'm going to do this in burp is because I can change request method to a post request. And then put the parameter down here. And there we go. We get the code execution. Now, why would I do this? Because post parameters have fewer bad characters. And they can be of unlimited length. Uh, get get requests. Uh, parameters in get requests have... Uh, uh, they have stricter... They have stricter bad... They have... Uh, it's, it's, it's trickier to get... The, it's more... It's more bad characters you have to deal with, and it's also there's also a length limit to like 2,000 characters or something like that. Uh, usually, it doesn't really matter because all we're gonna do is execute a reverse shell. You could easily do that in get requests, but this is what I like to do. Um, this is what I like to do for uh, in real life. So we are gonna use our hack tricks, our hack tools, um, reverse shell generator. Our browser extension, uh, and we're gonna cop. We're gonna generate a reverse shell here. Paste this in right here. We see that we're. This is a basic reverse shell one-liner that you can get from pen, from payloads, all the things, or pen test monkey. We're gonna hit Control U to control. Sh we're gonna hit Control U to URL encode all of this stuff because this is the URL encoded content type, and uh, we have to start a netcat listener. And just like that. Hackerman. I'm in. Cool, right? Now, to, like, if you have questions, now's the time to ask. We're going to do... Why is that not whitelisted anyway? Because whitelists break stuff. Whitelists break stuff. I mean, they did have a whitelist. They were only allowing probably JPEG and GIF. 
Oh my god, I said the satanic word. What the fuck did I- Why did I pronounce it that way? They probably only allow JPEGs and GIFs. It's your guys' fault. You know what? It's chat's fault. It's chat's fault because you made me go on and on about why GIF is the correct pronunciation. Okay, that's why. Because I got stuck in my head now. Got stuck in my head. Maybe because it's the correct way to say it? Get fucked, like, three left seconds. Fucking three left seconds. Um, anyway, they were probably whitelisting those file types, but they were checking... They were checking... Uh, they were using an insecure method to check for the file types, essentially. Rye skill. Listen. Listen, Rye skill. Listen. Listen. I'm not even gonna get worked up for you. You're not worth it, Rye skill. Listen. I'm not getting worked up over Twitch chat anymore, okay? Bruno is... I, I just said I'm not gonna get worked up. I'm not gonna get worked up. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna yell at chat. I'm just gonna say very calmly that they know where they can stick it. Okay? Was that the shell you got running with elevate? Was that shell you got running with elevated privileges? No, we are dub 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 data. So we still have to escalate here. What's more reliable than a magic bytes check? Um, you, you can check that the actual content of the file conforms to a standard JPEG or uh, uh, GIF uh, image format. Um, you can, you can, uh, uh, there's other checks that, there's checks that you can do to check for file types that don't involve magic bytes. You can also uh, whitelist for file extension. Uh, and things like that. And you can also prevent the user from knowing where the file is being uploaded to. Okay. So. First thing, we have kind of a jerry-rigged reverse shell here. Because we hacked a website in order to get into this. Uh, so we're going to use Python to get a... Uh, to get a pseudo TTY. A pseudo terminal here. We're going to background our prompt. We're going to run STTY raw minus echo. What this does, I keep it, I have not killed my shell here. The shell is still running. It's in the background. Okay. I hit control Z to background it. Basically what STTY raw minus echo is going to do is it turns off terminal echo. That's this. Uh, notice terminal echo is how it's repeat. It's echoing back my commands to me. That's ugly and I don't like it. So I, I turn it off and it's also setting my TTY on my Kali to raw. So it's not going to parse any of my keyboard inputs. It's just going to send them straight through the reverse shell unparsed. So you won't get like, you, you won't be able to see my control Z here. It'll work like a real shell. And then we're going to foreground the shell again with FG. And here we are. Uh, export term is equal to X term. We're going to set the terminal to environment variable. So now we can clear the screen even. And we have a reasonable shell now. Does anyone, does that make, does that make sense? Uh, we stabilized our shell, so we have a more uh, stable reverse shell now that works like we'd expect uh, a, uh, a terminal to work. All this is aesthetic upgrades, no real functional difference, just less annoying. That's not true. We now have tab autocomplete as well. We, like, if we wanted to cat avatar, uh, I could just tab autocomplete it. I have tab autocomplete, and I also have, um, I can clear the screen. Um, I can do most of the, I can interact with things like my, I, with interactive programs. Like if I wanted to use MySQL or SSH, for instance, I could interact with those programs in this shell, in this pseudo interactive terminal now. I couldn't do that in just the raw and map scan. Please fold with the six month re, uh, re indoctrination into the cult. Welcome back to the All Has Red team, my friend. Is that more stable than just Python import PTY? Uh, it, you won't get uh, tab autocomplete unless you do uh, STTY raw minus echo. You can also use like nano and VI and stuff in this as well. So we are dub 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 data. So the first thing I want to do is see if I can find credentials somewhere. Are there database credentials in here somewhere? API.php? Core? There's got to be, there's usually like a config.php or something, a db.php, perhaps. Security.php? And we're looking for fine additions to our collection. We're looking for credentials. This looks like it's some encryption shit. 
DB. That sounds good. CDDB. Less core flat dot PHP. Database credentials. How does the captcha.php work? I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know. Captcha, listen, listen. Let the captcha go, chat. It's a, it's dead to us, okay? Is this MySQL? This isn't MySQL, is it? Yeah, it didn't work. Just trying some basic passwords here. Nope. So we're looking for database credentials. We may not find anything. I'm not gonna stick with it unless I'm in it.php. Looking for passwords, looking for passwords. Okay, we could just grep recursively, grep tech r. Uh, what's the, what is it to ignore case? How do I ignore ca case? Man grep. How did, how do I do case insensitive grep? Is it, it's tac i? Tac i, thank you. Grep, tac r, i, uh, password. I regret. I have some regrets. But let's see if any useful information came out of this. So here's the password reset function. Uh, that's not of terrible interest to us. And we've... Uh, let's pipe this into less. I'm just looking to see if there's a database password somewhere. Dashboard.php has password in it. Oh. It doesn't look like there's a database password or anything, which kind of sucks. Uh, so why am I doing this? Why didn't I do this on Geisha? Again, this is another thing I try to highlight on this stream. The thought process. Why am I looking for database credentials right now? I mean, obviously, database credentials are nice, but why didn't I even bring this up on Geisha? Why didn't I say on Geisha, why don't we go look for database credentials? What is my thought process? Qt.js, personal, users.php. Yeah, Zervi is correct. Uh, is X I R V I I I? Yeah, because we're dub 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 data. We we specifically have the permissions of a web server, and the web server needs to be able to access the backend database. Um, so those credentials have to be somewhere. I'm sure they are somewhere. I'm just not finding them. Uh, like if it was WordPress, there's a WP config file which contains the database credentials. Uh, sometimes it's kind of a pain in the ass to find them. Uh, but, uh, but I, I, I could probably, look, we'll come back to this. I'm not going to sit here wrapped around the axle trying to find this stuff. Uh, but uh, previously we logged in as a regular user. Geisha was a regular user that we logged in as. So it's unlikely that Geisha has access to database credentials. Again, this, this thought process, reverse engineer captcha.php. I hate you guys. You guys suck. Okay. Why do I, why do I, why do I? play this part of Jane Goodall and wrangle these apes like three times a week. Oh, wow, this is super cool. I got to start doing cybersecurity challenges, CTF. You absolutely should be BitDefy. First of all, welcome. I have not seen, I don't think I've seen you in chat, BitDefy. Good to have you. Thanks for being here. Glad you're being and feeling expired. This is cool shit. This is like the real cool shit. Are you preparing for the OSCP? Oh, I got my OSCP years ago, my dude. But this kind of stuff is exactly what you want to do to prepare for the OSCP for sure. Oh, the box name is wrong. You're right about that. Let me change that. Is 
Ruby Grounds, BBS cute. Orbital Gun bringing Zervi into the fold, indoctrinating him into the club of cephalopod enthusiasts. Welcome, Zervi. Welcome to the All Has Red team. Orbital Gun, thank you so much. Uh, please fold. Uh, thank you once again for your uh, six month Prime subscription. Okay, so. I'm not going to get wrapped around the app. Let's just look at groups. Let's do some quick enumeration otherwise. Let's look for SUID binaries again. Now, you might ask, what is this two greater than nev null thing? That just means two means standard error. Means we don't want to see errors. This is basically preventing me from seeing errors. We're just piping standard uh, out standard error to dev null. So we don't see them. Because otherwise, we're going to get a fuckload of errors here. Um, by when, when find tries to access files that our user does not have permission to access. So do we get any, anything interesting here? Anything that stands out? Uh... HPing3. What's HPing3? First of all, I don't even fucking know what HPing3 is. But guess what? Even if I... Uh, like... What do I do? I see a thing here that I don't know. What do I do, chat? I don't know what HPing3 is. It's probably some kind of ping thing. I don't know what it is. Uh, but we can Google it. A lot of you were saying GTF opens, which is also what we're going to do. But I'm demonstrating to you, I don't automatically know what any of these things are. I don't automatically know. It comes with Nmap? Oh, okay. Command line oriented TCP IP packet assembler analyzer. Interesting. Oh, I think I have used this before. It's just been a long time. It's just been a long time. So can this do anything interesting? Do you have like an interactive prompt or something? If you don't know something, Google it. Google it and read about it. What is it doing? What does it do? So this is this allows you to assemble TCP and ICMP packets raw. Uh, so it's like Scapy. Normally, I would use Scapy for this function. Scapy is a Python library. I would normally use Scapy for this function, um, which is why I haven't used HPing3, uh, and I wasn't immediate. That wasn't immediately sure what it is. Uh, but if it's included in Nmap, if it's included in Nmap, Nmap has an interactive version. Uh, does this have some kind of interactive? Oh, let's just try GTF opens. You were thinking of nping? Okay, uh, let's do hping. Would you looky there, chat? Spawning an interactive SUID. If the binary has the SUID bit set, which it does, let's see what user it belongs to. Belongs to root, has the SUID bit set. I'm full mast. Full mast, my my bro, my bros. Full mast. And it's not gay, okay? It does not drop the elevated privileges and may be abused to access the file system. Escalator maintain privilege access access as an SUID backdoor. If it is used to run SH TAC P, omit the TAC P argument on systems like Debian that allow the default SH shell to run with SUID privileges. I believe this is Ubuntu, is it not? Yeah, it's Debian. So we, we, we omit the TAC P, it looks like. Uh, so we could just run this binary, it looks, it appears. Uh, and then we can just do slash bin slash sh. And uh, it looks like we, we do have... Uh, we're still dub 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 data. It is executing, but we are still dub 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 data. So it looks like the TAC P option does need to be included. Uh, bin sh will try to drop drop permissions. So we do have to add the TAC P slash bin slash bash TAC P, and there we go. Who am I now? 
We are root. What's the difference between Ben Bash and Ben SH? They're different shells. Uh, ben SH is a simpler shell. Bash is uh, more modern uh, with more functions, uh, basically. Either of them would have worked just fine. Does anybody have any questions about that? So we didn't even, I forgot to even get the local.txt. We have proof.txt right here. Uh, where is local.txt? Cat user.txt. Okay. Find root tag name. Local.txt. Local.txt is the name of the is the file that uh, uh, the flag is in. It makes sense it'd be in bar dub dub dub. This is the user flag. Hunt. Go. And there we are. Both flags submitted. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Bit defied Skyfire. Thank you for the follow. -up.